everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Better You. I am your host, Fernanda Ramirez, and welcome back to another episode. I am so excited to have you guys here, and I'm so excited that you clicked on this episode because in today's episode, we are specifically going to talk about something that impacts me, it impacts the people that live around me, and probably half of the world right now. We are heading into the winter months. It is still the end of fall, and that means there is a time change. That means we are in a transitional period between seasons. That means that the days are getting shorter. It's literally becoming nighttime by 5 p.m. where I live. It's just getting cold and chilly and I feel like sometimes it can be even a little bit hard to feel motivated during these months when we're getting ready to go on holidays, spend time with our family, spend time with our friends, and we're just so distracted. I know in some places of the world it is summer right now and you're not even dealing with things like this. It might even be a heat wave. And for those people that are listening to this episode, then this might not be completely applicable. But in this episode, we're going to talk about all the things that I'm going to do to make sure that I'm feeling my absolute best this winter season and to kind of romanticize the season itself. You guys know that this is something that I talk about a lot because every single year I feel like I'm pretty used to or accustomed to getting a little bit down in the dumps and I think now that I'm older I actually don't get the seasonal blues that bad as I did maybe when I was like 19 or 20. I feel like now I've got the resources and the tools to not let that happen. But there are a few things like feeling a little bit more pale and crusty and dry in the winter or feeling like you need to socialize too much and getting distracted or even maybe retracting too much and feeling like you shouldn't socialize and then feeling kind of lonely. Anyways, in this episode, I'm going to give you guys the ultimate guide to preventing the seasonal blues and just fighting the emotions that may come when transitioning into the winter season and just embracing the darkness instead. If you guys are new to my podcast, make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure that you have given the podcast a rating, and make sure that you guys follow the Instagram at abetteryou.byfernanda because I'm always reposting when you guys are listening to the podcast and I'm posting photos for your inspiration, for you guys to repost, for you guys to save, and it's just a little community we've got going on there. So make sure that is happening. Before we get into the rest of this episode, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a life update and then we shall begin. This week, I recently came back from Los Angeles and I had such a good time when I was in LA. I literally only went for like three days to have a very exciting and important meeting with an agency. And I don't want to say anything yet because it's not for sure, but it went really well and I'm so happy that it did. I just wanted to bring it up because we talked a lot about the podcast. It's kind of like I was talking about you guys behind your back, but all with the best intentions. I was talking to them about plans and ideas I had for the future about this podcast and it was just the biggest ego boost honestly because they loved the podcast so much and they gave me so many ideas for ways that I can take this podcast in 2024. It just made me so excited and I hope that you guys are excited too and that you guys are loving all the episodes. I will say I have been a little bit less consistent over the past few months which has been my fault but I'm always trying to get my episodes up and episodes that are good quality and that I'm proud of and that you guys like. I hope that you guys have been liking the episodes up to date. As you guys know, I post every single Wednesday. There are some Wednesdays where I don't get it up in time and then I feel so horrible, but that is usually because I have so many other social media platforms going at the same time that sometimes it can be really hard to get all of them up to date. But just know that if you guys only listen to me on the podcast and you guys aren't following me on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or Snapchat or anything else, then it might feel like crickets when I don't upload once a week but I am active on every single platform every single day so that is one thing but anyways regarding the meeting I don't want to spoil too much because again it's all for 2024 but there's so many plans for the podcast and I've been seeing a lot of live shows for podcasts recently which we didn't really talk about that but I was even thinking that could be so cool and I would love to meet you guys in person and do like a live show or something I don't know I feel like those are the types of things where content creators could get imposter syndrome because it's so surreal that people would go to your shows or see you live but if that did happen that would just be so fun and such a cool experience i just feel like me and you whoever's listening to this we could really bond face to face. Anyways, keep on the lookout for 2024 things. Other than that, November has been such a great month for me. It was recently my friend's birthday. She turned 22 and I have just been in a very friend 
mindset. I feel like I've been really enjoying just seeing friends in my hometown or friends in my city and just spending time with people that lift me up and make me feel just laughy. <laughs> That's really like not a proper describing word, but I just feel like my spirits have been very lifted recently. I will say though, it is almost the Christmas season and I'm overwhelmed by the fact that I, I don't know, I feel like I'm already late and it's not even December. I think that's when you know that influencers and consumerism or maybe, I don't know, capitalism is really working its magic because they're setting up the decorations, the sales, the hype around Christmas, like November 1st, and that is already making me feel like I'm behind when truthfully, we should still be embracing the fall season. Anyways, I don't wanna talk about myself for too long, so let's just get into the episode. I have made a list of so many different themes that we're gonna go through. I just feel like this is going to give you guys the ultimate inspiration for how the next month and a half should go. Or actually, I'm not even going to say month and a half because you could be listening to this in January and it's still winter. So we're going to talk about having mini glow ups. We're going to talk about staying active. We're going to talk about embracing the darkness, picking up hobbies, staying social, staying healthy, and just some other tips that I have for you guys to really feel good from the inside and out. I'm going to go in no particular order because if I tried to make an order, I I feel like it would start to get a little bit confusing, but first we're going to talk about embracing the darkness. Now, one thing I will say about going into the winter is that sometimes we try to have the same routine that we're having in the summer into the winter because, you know, we've gotten really comfortable with it. We feel like it's been working for us for the past six months, then why not continue it? But I think we need to remember that it is a completely different season. And there's a quote that I really like, and it says, there is nothing on earth that blooms all year long. Nature wasn't created to do that, and neither are you. And I feel like taking that quote, we can see that like, Every single season, there are plants that have its blooming phase, plants that are having their leaves fall, etc. Every single season, even the prettiest of flowers change. And so I feel like going into this next season, we cannot make the mistake of thinking that our runs at 5 a.m. with a cold smoothie and raw vegetables are going to hit the same as in the winter when you want to do a candlelit yoga, have some stew, and be cozied up in bed with a book by 9 p.m. It is just a whole different thing. I feel like instead of trying to do your summer routine and being kind of annoyed at yourself that you're not following through with it or being like, oh my gosh, this was so much easier in the summer. Why am I not on my shit? Like, why am I not doing things how I should be doing them? It's kind of being okay with that and just closing that chapter, opening a new one and thinking, how can I embrace the darkness? How can I make this easier for me and for me to just flow easier and being okay with maybe waking up a little bit earlier, getting my work done in the day and then getting all cozy and preparing for bed a lot earlier than usual. So I guess the first thing is having that mindset and being okay with the change that is gonna happen and realizing that for a little bit, our routines are gonna be different and they are gonna look different and that's okay. Something that I recommend doing is creating a very cozy environment for yourself. One where it just kind of makes you want to relax and want to kind of turn into a little hermit because I feel like that's the perfect time, especially during the holidays, to do that. For me, I love having obviously my Christmas tree up. I mean, she's already up. She's giving me that warm lighting, but using candles or warm lighting or just different types of light fixtures instead of the overhead lighting that just feels so grim, especially when sometimes even the light that you get from outside your window is kind of cloudy and gray. I feel like lifting the environment up with some light will always make you feel better. I know my boyfriend always tells me that because sometimes he'll come over and he's like, why do you have it so depressing in here? Like, why don't you have any of the lamps turned on? And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice. So I'll go ahead and turn on all my lamps and I just feel so much greater after that. There is like a type of aesthetic or like a room decor Japanese inspired and they always have these little lamps and just so much greenery in their apartment and it just looks so wonderful. And I always see a picture of it and I just think to myself, I want to go to there. So make sure that you are using soft lighting and you can even get fairy lights to create this warm and inviting atmosphere. I recently put fairy lights in my room like maybe two months ago and it's already made such a difference. And even if you're older than me or you may think that fairy lights is kind of like a thing of the past, it's for kids, whatever, honestly embrace it. It's so fun and I feel like even it might bring your inner child out. Another way that you can create a 
cozy environment is by using a lot of different blankets and cushions. If you guys go to like Chapters or Barnes and Nobles or Indigo, they always have the cutest blankets and pillows ready out for Christmas. And so I feel like getting some new ones for the season will 100% make you more inspired to just lay in bed and get comfortable. Another thing that you can do to embrace the darkness and the cold weather is to wear comfortable, fuzzy, soft clothing and wearing even like robes around the house or wearing slippers around the house, just items that make you feel very warm and even investing in a space heater. I know my boyfriend has one and it makes all the difference, honestly. I think I need to get one for myself, but it just makes you feel so toasty and warm, especially when you're falling asleep and it's just so cozy. But honestly, be careful with that one because it will make you not want to get up in the morning. Another thing you can do to embrace the darkness is by playing a happy playlist or playing playlists that romanticize the season. My friend recently made an Instagram account and I'm gonna plug it in just in case there is listeners from Vancouver listening to this podcast, but she goes to the school SFU, which is Simon Fraser University here in Vancouver and Burnaby. And I guess for an assignment in her class, she had to like make an Instagram account. So she made one called romanticize underscore SFU. And it's basically a whole little project going on for romanticizing the school because it is so grim looking, like it is made out of cement. And I think a lot of the students don't like going there, especially because it is so gray, it is so gloomy, and we already live in a city that is super rainy and it's just not the easiest to romanticize. So she made this account to kind of embrace the darkness. She made a whole bunch of different playlists to romanticize going to school. And I'll just read you some of the titles and I feel like they really encapsulate what kind of feeling you wanna have going into school. So she made a playlist called No Time For Coffee. Listen to this playlist instead. She made another one called Making It To That 8.30 Lecture. Another one called Studying At A Warm Cafe. Another one, Walking To Class Like The Main Character. Character. I feel like that's a really cute title. Another one called The Campus at Night, and then another one called For When the Campus is Foggy and Rainy. So as you can see, she made a whole bunch of different playlists to encapsulate those feelings. One of the things that she wrote down in one of her captions that I thought was really true was that living in Vancouver, you can either find the beauty in the rain or hate 70% of the year, which is crazy to even think about the fact that it rains that much in a year. But I feel like having that quote in mind, you can kind of think about that as the winter season and the dark and rather than being annoyed at how early it's getting dark just enjoying it because otherwise you're gonna be hating like three months of the year and it's just not worth it to do that next we're gonna talk about some winter hobbies one that I wanted to say just straight off the bat is going to the movie theater and I say that because there are so many good movies in the movie theater right now that I really want to watch personally I know Priscilla is at the movies which is the movie with Elvis and Priscilla with Jacob Elordi I really want to see that I think there's also salt burden coming out that is with Jacob Elordi and and there's also the new Hunger Games movie. And there's just always good movies coming out at the theater that I never go to. So I feel like going to the movies is a super fun activity that you can ask someone else to do with you. And it's just perfect for staying inside and like on a rainy day because you're gonna be inside anyways. Not only that, but you can have movie nights in your apartment or your house or your room. I think I'm gonna host a sleepover for my friend and I this Friday. And we're probably gonna have a little Christmas themed night and do some baking, maybe watch a Christmas movie. And I'm just so excited to, to get all cozy and even maybe bring my mattress from my room into my living room and just have all of the little Christmas snacks, some baked goods, and just really relax. Some other indoor activities that you can do is reading. There's so many good books, especially at Chapters or Indigo or whatever. There's usually like even a TikTok section and those are the books that are most popular online and you can even go to TikTok as well after and chat with other people about the books that you read and what your thoughts were. I think there's also an app called Goodreads. I personally don't have it, but I think every time you finish reading a book, you can put your review and your rating on there and then you can add other people so you can see each other's review and ratings. So if you're a book reader, I highly recommend getting that app and just getting on that. Some other activities are knitting or crocheting. I definitely wanna learn that this year. I'm gonna ask my mom. There is also embroidery. I just recently bought a little pack to learn how to do that. So I am gonna do that. There's also painting. I 
bring this up because as I said it was my friend's birthday she asked for so many paint supplies and she said that she wants to make cards and figure out how she can make those cards into like digital prints that you can put on tote bags or on mugs etc and you can even sell it online which you can even start a little side hustle with that so I feel like that's really fun in itself I've also been seeing the rise of like coloring books and these big markers to color with like for adults and so I think that is also a great activity to do at home with some music going a little candle going and just embracing being off your phone because y'all know I think I might be addicted to the scroll here and there so another thing that you can really emphasize is on nighttime hobbies that actually involve being in the dark and you need to be in the dark for example if you live in an environment that it's actually quite warm even though it is dark I feel like stargazing would be the ultimate fun thing to do at this time I haven't even gone stargazing in so long but just looking up getting some blankets maybe even camping I feel like that would be that'd be the dream I'd honestly be doing that if I wasn't in such a cold environment right now you can also do photography Photography. I think there are certain photography styles that actually look better in the dark or that are for the dark So I feel like learning how to do that would be great or even going on night walks with someone else I'm personally not a fan of the night walks But if you go to certain places like lit up parks where they actually have Christmas lights going I feel like that can be super fun, especially with a little drink in your hand last year I actually did so many Christmas activities that involved it being dark and I felt like I was really embracing the season If you're from Vancouver, you might recognize these but Lafarge Lake always has lights around the lake and little food stands so that's super fun there's also the Van Dusen Gardens I went there last year that was super fun and maybe even neighborhoods with houses that are fully decked out in Christmas decor you can also prioritize self-care and do a full self-care relaxing bath get your little book out get some bubble bath get some Epsom salt and just really relax or you can literally not even do an activity and just truly lay there and feel like you're rejuvenating I feel like sometimes we can do these relaxing activities and grab a whole like coloring book and music and lights and make it super extra when it's like you can also just relax in the bath and just feel good. Another idea is to even learn how to do your own nails at home. Now in the past recent years I've gotten really accustomed to getting my nails done with acrylics and I feel like even girls in high school I see like especially on my TikTok there's girls so young getting their acrylic nails done but all throughout middle school and high school I had a huge box of nail polish and every time I would come home from school like once a week I would set up a little table get my nail polish out watch YouTube eat some milk and cookies and paint my nails like I remember that so vividly and that was something that I did all the time it was honestly such a fun hobby and I felt like so on top of my shit like really taking care of my own nails even practicing nail art like honestly I miss that because that was a hobby of mine that I actually really enjoyed doing and now ever since I got my nails done with acrylic like I don't even have to look at them which I guess is great for like maybe a busy adult that doesn't have have time to look at their nails but if you're in school or you do have that extra time that is a very fun activity and the last one is even starting content creation I do want to make a whole episode on starting content creation everything you need to know and getting over the fear and all that kind of stuff but honestly I would not recommend starting content creation more especially if you have an eye for just creativity and you want to share what you're going through or you have a creative eye where you know how to edit or maybe you're really into fashion or you just have some interest that you would love to share with the world I highly recommend starting now especially because during the holidays there's a lot of people on their phones there's a lot of trends going on that is Christmas related there's vlogmas going on if you upload on YouTube and you're getting paid for it the CPM which is like how much you get paid per ad is actually higher so you'll make more money there's like so many reasons why starting content creation is one a good idea and two during the holidays a great idea especially because if you do have the holidays off and you do have extra time on your hands it is just the perfect time to start and you can even film some get ready with me you can film like hosting ideas there's so many things that you can film during this time so pick up a little hobby try it out during the nights and I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it moving on we're gonna talk about staying social either you are so social during the holidays that it's almost like god damn we might need a break or you might be retracting so much you're in hermit mode that you're feeling a little bit down in the dumps and a way to actually combat that is just to go see people so depending on who you are in this scenario the advice would be different but regardless of who you are social interaction is so important whether that be with family and friends during the holidays it is just such a good time to catch up with people you haven't talked to in a while get in touch with others and even fun activities that you can do with someone else like all of the Christmas activities I said earlier or even like seeing a show such as the Nutcracker or going ice skating or going skiing 
or maybe having a little cabin getaway. I feel like there's just so many things that you can do with others. Definitely don't forget to stay social during the winter months, especially because it can be months that may feel a little bit isolating. I definitely know that for myself, whenever I spend like a few days without seeing another human being, I start going a little bit crazy. So even if it's just 10 minutes a day or an hour a day where you see a buddy, a friend, just see someone face to face that you can connect to, it makes all the difference in my mood. Sometimes when I'm so busy that, you know, you don't have time to like go for dinner with someone, even just picking up a friend and going to a workout together or going on a walk together, which is something that can be productive for both of you, is so helpful to still get that social interaction in. I know that after I finish this podcast episode, I will definitely be going to a cafe with my friend and that is one of my favorite things to do. I feel like I talk about it all the time. They're so cozy. They're so warm. I love the sound of like jazz music in the back, the sound of chit chat. Everyone's working. It kind of feels like a little community, even if you're not interacting with everybody there. You can also dress up super cute and pretend you're the main character and act like everybody's looking at you, feel like Rory Gilmore. You can get a little coffee. You can get some little baked goods, a little sandwich, like it's just my favorite. Not only will seeing friends combat your isolation if that is what's happening during the winter months, but it also automatically will provide you a support system if you are going through things, especially during this time where people are spending extra time with their family and things are wrapping up. It can be a very stressful time for a lot of people. Talking to friends or loved ones is such a good way to gain perspective, to feel like weight is lifted off your shoulder if you're holding on to a lot. And it's also just an automatic mood booster. If all your friends are busy and so is your family, it's also a great time to meet up with new people because as said earlier, a lot of restaurants and coffee shops and bars are especially decorated for the season. So asking a friend to go to like a new bar together can be a super great idea to break the ice as well as experiencing things together. I think one of the best ways to form strong bonds and relationships is by creating memories. And if you guys book a trip together or go on a little winter road trip or go skiing together, that is automatically going to give you guys an activity where you can connect. And it's not all about having that awkward small talk. It's about doing the activity and then kind of laughing about the experience or chatting about it or reflecting on how it was for both of you. But ultimately, it's all about balance. If you are okay with solitude, that is also okay. It is the time to recharge and relax and rejuvenate especially if you are overwhelmed by work or social activities it is fine for that solitude time and if you feel like you don't have any friends to reach out to don't feel that you need to don't feel that you have to I also have an episode on my podcast that is ideas on things to do by yourself or how you can spend time alone and there are so many TikToks and videos where they also give you ideas and tips on how to embrace that loneliness another idea to embrace social interaction is by hosting social gatherings. Ever since I've been living alone, I've been having so much fun hosting, whether that be hosting a birthday party, a sleepover, Thanksgiving, a summer lunch, a tea party, whatever it is, it's always so fun. I feel like people get really excited to attend, even if it's like a home dinner, just something where they can dress up for and even bring a dish. Also, I feel like it doesn't have to be super expensive, especially if you ask everyone to bring something. You can even organize like a secret Santa or a white elephant or a drinks night. I feel like that way you can see multiple friends at the same time and it's not a lot of pressure. You guys can even have movie marathons or have game nights and you can just enjoy each other's company even while it's dark. One thing I will say though is that if you're listening to this when the episode comes out and it's like end of November, definitely plan your gatherings now and plan them ahead of time and start doing those invites soon because with the winter and holiday seasons coming, I feel like everybody's schedule is just booking up and if you want people to come to your thing, you have to ask in advance. And also speaking of asking in advance, if you make even like a little e-invite on Canva or something like that, or even like handwritten notes, that will just be so fun for not only you, but for the person getting the invite. And I feel like when someone gets an invite, it just feels like so much more of an event. It feels so much more special and people are really going to show up and show out for this. Moving on, we're gonna talk about staying healthy and diet during the holidays. Diet as in what kind of foods we should be eating as into incorporating all the winter foods that we don't necessarily wanna eat all summer long. By this, I mean stews and soups and winter veggies such as squash, root vegetables, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, sweet potatoes, leafy greens, beets, turnips. They have so many vitamins and are just great for your immune system. Also, vitamin D rich foods are so 
so important to boost your mood for the winter season. Some foods that are great for vitamin D are salmon, egg yolks, milk, red meat, and shiitake mushrooms, which I actually haven't tried, but I really want to try. Beans like chickpeas are also great. As I said earlier, they're really great in stews, which is just perfect for a little warm meal. Chickpeas are full of protein and contain nearly all essential amino acids, which is just great to hear. Also, soup. I mean, we are entering soup season. It is soup girl winter, and I, I love all different types of soups. I think soup is actually my favorite food, whether that be ramen or pho or veggie soup or minestrone soup or vegetable broth, like bone broth, like literally just soup in general. One of the things I will recommend is having a low sodium soup. So using like low sodium chicken stock or veggie stock. Another food that I personally want to add on here is that recently I've been eating a lot of butter chicken. So random. Well, actually I guess it's not that random, but I feel like it was random for me because I hadn't had butter chicken in so long, but I have been on a butter chicken craze. Is that the word? Crave? And I've just been craving it so much. The sauce is so good. Chicken has a lot of protein. The rice is good. Like it just feels so warm and toasty and all the spices and seasoning just feels like like the ultimate meal for the winter. Also, berries is a great food to be eating just literally at all times of the year. Berries are like one of the highest antioxidant fruits. I actually had some this morning on top of my yogurt with some granola and bananas and it was delicious. And speaking of that, Greek yogurt and nuts are also great. It is my go-to breakfast. It also has such a high protein amount. And as I said, nuts also are just great for the winter season. I feel like I always have nuts around the Christmas time, whether that be almonds or walnuts or, I mean, I don't like pistachios peanuts or cashews but if you like those those are great too anyways those are a bunch of different foods that are super healthy and will make you glow from within because one of the next topics I want to talk about is having a little glow up during the winter I don't know about you guys but whenever the winter season comes around I start feeling a little ugly and I hate to say it like that because obviously I'm beautiful affirmations but sometimes you just feel ugly you know when you wake up and you're like oh my god I look hideous and you're like wait but yesterday I looked good what was the difference let me tell you guys for me usually it's the fact that I'm so so pale but not in like a bad way because I like being pale too but it's like in the way of like I haven't seen the sun in months and I look like I am the walking dead sometimes I'm staying up too late and my bags are extra prominent and when I am pale you can see every little imperfection on my face whether that be a pimple or a veiny eyelid or eczema or just anything like it is so prominent I also start getting eczema because I'm not moisturizing enough or drinking enough water which is just the absolute worst I'm maybe not working out as much because I'm like it's so cold it's just want to be cozy at home and it's just like by the month it is already winter I'm like why do I feel so bad about myself so anyways mini glow up during the winter this is essential for me okay you can take this how you will because maybe some people won't like that exactly but I'm gonna say when it is the winter season it is the perfect time to take extra care and attention to yourself one of the things that makes me feel absolutely better without a doubt is self tanning last year I did a bunch of spray tans in January which to each their own I feel like a lot of people would not agree with that but I'm honestly down to get a spray tan again maybe before the Christmas time just because it upped my confidence by a landslide and I just felt so good and it was also so hydrating on my skin I just felt like I looked way better the other self tans that I really like is the one by Luxie tan I think that's what it's called or tan Lux. also I love staying on top of getting my nails done and my toes done I feel like it just makes me feel like a different person especially getting a nice little pedicure I swear if you get a gel pedicure and you just let them be it'll last for like a month and a half and I just feel a million times better when my feet are soft and well taken care of rather than when they're like dry and have horrible calluses you can also do this at home for yourself even if you have like a little pumice stone or you want to put a bunch of Vaseline or lotion on your feet and then put socks on before bed which I know it's a controversial opinion because probably a lot of people don't like sleeping with socks on but I swear when I put lotion on my feet and then I go to bed with socks and I wake up I feel I feel like a new woman if you want to go the extra mile and do other beautiful beauty treatments I mean you can always get your lashes lifted and tinted or lash extensions or get your eyebrows laminated I don't dye my hair but if dyeing your hair is what makes you feel great I feel like getting a fresh little re hair dye job before the Christmas season and New Year's will make you just feel a hundred percent when going into the next period and as said earlier hydrating from the inside out is the most important thing you can do especially during these dry times um some things I like to do is 
something I like to do is getting on top of my skin routine. I mean, I've been breaking out so bad recently, so I just got a facial yesterday, which was great. It made me feel good. Um, I feel like I've got my skincare routine down packed and now I'm just hopefully waiting for my skin to clear up. But something I could definitely be doing during this time is drinking a lot of water so that I'm at least doing what I can from the inside and out. And also using a lot of like Aquaphor and Vaseline. And also something that helped me a lot last year with my eczema was using a humidifier. This can add moisture into your home when it is super dry, which can prevent the air from drying out your hair and face, which is kind of crazy. I never really thought about that, that it can actually dry your hair, but it makes so much sense because whenever it is winter I feel like my hair just looks super brittle and speaking of hair I feel like this is a great time to do hair masks or to get a hair trim and also be mindful of shedding I think this is the time where your hair may shed I personally love oiling my hair but the other week I was oiling it like all week long that I didn't wash it and then when I washed it I swear so many hairs fell out that I was scared I was balding on the spot I read online after that that when you don't wash your hair for a while and then you go to wash it it's really common for a bunch of hairs to fall out so just I'm telling you that now so if it happens to you you don't feel freaked out Another thing that you can do is have everything showers like once a week. I just posted a video on my YouTube channel where I went to Target and I bought a whole bunch of different self-care products. So if you want to watch that video, it'll be up on my YouTube channel and you'll definitely see some recommendations for body scrubs, body washes, shampoo and conditioners, and just bath tools. I definitely will be keeping myself to a more strict regimen is that the word, of everything showers so that I feel on top of it, but definitely exfoliating, using loofahs, using moisturizing body washes, using Dove soap, all of the above in the shower is super important, but make sure that you're not showering with super hot water because hot showers in the wintertime can strip your skin of natural oils leading to dryness, which we do not want. Instead, you can opt for warm showers and limiting the duration of time that you are actually in there just because you do not want to feel like a little dry prune when you come out. And then when you get out, moisturizing is so important. My mom actually, ever since I was really little, she always taught me to moisturize out of the shower. And I feel like along the way, I stopped doing that. But I remember back in the day, I used to have such soft skin because of this. And my mom still does this to this day. So her skin is like a baby's bottom. I'm not kidding. She is the softest woman I have ever seen in my life. And it's because she's always moisturized. So definitely make sure that you're moisturizing all the dry parts that can probably start to crack, like your elbows and your knees and your legs, your arms, literally everywhere. Doing the whole little exfoliate and moisturize duo will just make your skin look so new and refined, especially before you're gonna self tan if you choose to do that. Exfoliating removes all the dead skin off your body. And when you moisturize yourself with like a rich cream after, not only will you smell good, but you will be feeling so hydrated and you'll be looking shiny. And I think the worst thing in the wintertime is looking dull and like lifeless. So definitely pretend that it's summer, even if it doesn't feel like it. Another thing that you can do is get a hand cream and like put it in your car or put it beside your bedtime table and moisturize your hands because my hands especially also start to crack and get really dry and applying hand cream frequently can prevent it from chapping and just looking super wrinkly and cracked. The other two things that I will definitely be doing moving forward for my little self glow up during the winter time is embracing sleep and staying active. I definitely have kind of fallen off both of those things and I talked about it in one of my recent episodes where we were talking about exiting our lazy era and although some things have improved I feel like my sleep schedule and my active routine schedule have not really improved. I definitely need to prioritize going to sleep earlier now that it gets dark so early. Having a relaxing sleep so that I can wake up earlier because whenever I sleep in in the winter time even though it's so tempting I swear half the day is gone so I cannot be doing that also having a lack of sleep can really affect your skin which is probably another reason why my skin has not been doing its best I really need to get back on that I feel like sometimes we can underestimate the power of sleep when it is literally like the most important thing you can be doing for yourself not only for your inner self but like your appearance which if you care about that you know, we should try to do our best to fix that. And then as for the staying active part of that, I have a whole little section for this. I know in the summer, we're all for going on runs, doing yoga, and maybe just doing things that involve the sun. But in the wintertime, there are so many different alternatives you can do that involve still being warm and cozy, like doing yoga or Pilates or even like indoor boxing. I recently did a sponsorship for... Um, 
a MetaQuest 3, which is one of those virtual VR headsets. And that was a sponsorship that I actually really enjoyed doing because it was something that I'll actually be using and that I have been using. And there is an app on the game, which is like boxing. And it's so fun. I get such a good sweat in and I don't even have to leave my house. So that is a perfect workout for me. I also think workouts that you can do at home, such as dance workouts where you're in front of your TV can be really motivating, exciting, and give you a good sweat as well as even if you have a stationary bike at home that can also give you a good sweat and you can get your cardio in but if you are feeling like you want to be outside and really take advantage of the fresh air going on a little winter walk with a little coffee in your hand is such a treat and i really do think that going outside even if it's just for a little bit makes me feel so much better especially in the winter time even a solid 30 minutes in the daylight outside and getting some exercise can increase your blood flow which will give you the ultimate skin healthy glow and it can also help in managing your stress which goes hand in hand with your appearance because when you are overly stressed out it shows now that i'm saying all these things i'm like <laughs> I gotta go, I gotta turn this off and I gotta go on a run and I gotta go eat some healthy food and I gotta go take a good night's rest. So that's what I gotta say. Okay, now we're gonna talk about some more healthy tips that I can give you guys for going into this next season. The first one is getting a sun lamp or trying light therapy. This is something that I did last year a lot while I was trying to combat the winter blues as it was my first winter living alone. And this really helped. The sunlight is a type of light that you can put on in your bedroom and it wakes you up like it's the sunshine. So it's not super aggressive like the alarm off your phone. And it also illuminates your whole room to feel like it is actually daylight, especially when there is like no light cracking through your windows, especially if you got blackout curtains. So, you know what? Actually, now that I say that out loud, I gotta stop using the blackout curtains because I am getting way too good of sleeps recently. Those sunlight lamps are super great and they have like a nice little bird sound to wake you up, which is just what I need. The other thing was light therapy, which is like a little light box that mimics natural sunlight. I used this light last year when I was doing work and when I was getting ready as like a little light on my face and it honestly really helped. I feel like I felt so much more energized when I did this, so I will definitely be pulling that out for the next few months. If you use one of these in the morning, it can actually help regulate your body's internal clock and improve your mood. So it's definitely worth looking into and getting one now if you can on like Amazon or something because if it's something that you know you struggle with, I think combating the issues straight off the bat and before it gets bad is the best thing you can do. Another thing that I love to do during the winter time to really help me feel better is practicing mindfulness and relaxation. You guys know how much I love meditating and doing those rituals that really refresh me even if it's journaling or manifesting or scripting or whatever it is those spiritual rituals really make all the difference and they really uplift my mood you can use these quiet evenings for the perfect time to even try something new like breath work there's a youtuber called hitomi mochizuki and she is one of my favorites i feel like you probably wouldn't expect this from me just because it's not really what my content is like but she is a very spiritual youtuber and again i know not everybody is spiritual or kind of aligns with that but i really find her content inspirational because she really embodies all the different seasons she really embraces them and she shows how it is okay to have a slower lifestyle to have moments of solitude and to really prioritize your relationship with yourself so i really think you guys should check out her videos and especially maybe watch her videos during the upcoming season or her past ones in the winter time because you will definitely find some inspiration there she does a lot of breath work and singing and she even uses crystal bowls and I feel like she even prioritizes like cuddling her friends which I just think is so beautiful and wholesome she is the ultimate inspo for me so definitely check out her videos if you haven't already and then the last thing I want to talk about is celebrating the seasonal traditions I will make a whole episode on how we can embrace the Christmas season and things that you can do and ideas and whatever but I just want to say it is such an important time to really do the Christmas activities and make the season feel special because if all you do is sulk around and complain that it's cold and you're not actually taking advantage of all the things you can do when it's dark and when it's cold, like skiing or doing Christmas activities, it really will defeat you. If you're from Vancouver, there is like ice skating rinks that are going to open up. There are seasonal stores like Christmas stores. There is the Christmas market. I think there's a new little activity that you can do in like Langley or something. And it's like a set of a Hallmark movie and you can go walk around in that, which is going to be so fun. I'm definitely going to be doing that. And even wearing things that make you feel good during the season 
season, whether that be sweaters or even tights with little skirts or listening to Christmas music, having drinks that are very Christmas themed like hot chocolate or peppermint mochas. Literally just doing the seasonal things will make you feel happy, it will make you feel jolly, and it'll put you in a good mood. But the last few things I want to say are some hacks that I found on TikTok that I want to tell you guys because I definitely think that these are things I want to do. The first one is by the creator Anushka and she gave the tip that you should wake up 30 minutes earlier than you normally do and start the day off with a plan. I know that this is a good idea because whenever I have a plan, I feel like the day goes by so much smoother. So I definitely agree with her on that. And also last January, I woke up so early and I woke up knowing that it was gonna be dark and I was actually okay with it. I feel like when you wake up and you don't have the intention of it being dark and you're like, oh my God, it's so dark, I hate this. You start getting in that grumpy mindset. But if you wake up knowing it's gonna be dark and you're actually thinking to yourself, like, I'm so proud of myself, I'm gonna enjoy this slow morning. It will honestly make you feel kind of happy for yourself that you're waking up so early the other thing that she had mentioned was to give yourself a small reward once a week and once monthly having these rewards is such a good way for yourself to stay on top of your tracks and just feel motivated to keep going especially when you know you may have finals or you may just be finishing up q4 i feel like for me i have a lot of brand deals and stuff i feel like giving myself something on the weekend to look forward to is especially helpful for me and the two last things i want to say is one if you can take advantage of saunas around you i know at my gym they have a sauna and i haven't gone once this season so i'm definitely excited to go in there and stay all cozy and toasty in the sauna and the other one is staying on top of your vitamins for me this means vitamin d and i'm usually an avid vitamin d taker like i take it basically all year round but i definitely will be on top of that as well as like iron and vitamin c those are the ones that are really great for me but i think going to get even your blood taken is a great great way to see if you're deficient on anything and just getting on top of those things before it's too late and yeah take care of yourself guys this is a time of year where we really have to take initiative on our own health and not leave it in the hands of anyone else this is the perfect time to grab a buddy and be each other's accountability partners be each other's rock be each other's happiness partners just be there for one another and overall just know that the season is going to be done so soon and we do not want to be a scrooge this year we do not want to be the grinch we want to be the jolly girl the jolly guy the jolly they during this winter season i love you guys i hope that this podcast gave you some inspiration some tips or even just some clarity on how you want the next few months to go i love you guys and i will talk to you so soon Thank you.